Okay, so once you have, uh, you're actually happy with the the sculpt model that you have in ZBrush, you can actually start to texture. And by texture, I mean painting the model. So there's a, I'll show you uh, how to do that. And so let's go ahead. And first thing I'm going to do is, we want to switch from the basic material to something that's going to display the uh, colors more properly. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, so let's go ahead and uh, apply a color to the model. First thing we have want to do is we want to enable what is uh, RGB up here. So basically that's the color uh, to activate enable color painting. And we also want to disable what is SD add because that's for sculpting. Unless you want to sculpt and paint at the same time, you can have both enabled. But since I'm just going to paint, I'm going to disable the sculpting. And to apply a, an overall uh, color to the whole object, first we have to pick a color for, this is our foreground color here. So say we picked, uh, this color right there. And if we go to color and fill object, now our object has that color. So if we switch to something else, our object is not going to switch. But as you may notice, the if we're using the basic material to display our color, it doesn't really do a very good job in displaying the accurate color of the object. Same goes if you're using the red color, which is just going to show you red even if you're painting on it. So we want to switch to, switch to something that displays color better, and that would be the skin shade 4, which is up here at the top. So as you can see, it's more accurate uh, in displaying the color that we're actually choosing here. So we choose the red color, an orange color. It's a bit more accurate than the than the basic material, as you can see. So that's how you can get started. Before you paint, I recommend that you fill the whole object with whatever colors. It can be like a skin color. So if we go to fill object. It, looks, it helps to look at the image to see what uh, what's supposed what's the skin color supposed to be like. All right, and if you recall, we created polygroups for our object. So if you enable uh, polyframe, we can see our polygroups again. As so you can see, everything that's grouped. That's in a different different uh, poly group. So this is when it comes really, uh, really handy to create those poly groups because we can uh, enable the visibility for something and paint it. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we start with the the shirt and we choose the green color, let's see. So let's say we have to pick that color and now if we hold down control shift and click on the shirt since we have a poly group we can only see the shirt and we can go to color fill object and as you can see control shift click outside the object to get everything back and as you can see only the shirt has been has that color and we can do the same with the gloves which is going to be not like a white color If we go to color fill object and again with the pants as well and this can be can just be like a base color it doesn't have to be your final result if you want to sample a color from the already existing uh, from ZBrush, if you hold, if you press C once, wherever your your cursor is at, even the background, as you can see we can get that green back for the hat. We go color fill object.
get that blue from that one. And again, this is just the base of the... It's not necessarily the last thing. The final color, you know, it's just the base for now. So you can always tweak the colors. And as you can see, using polygroups made it so much easier to select specific areas and you know fill with the color really quickly So that made it really easy and fast to start. And of course, we're not going to be happy with the, you know, just using a base color in just one. We have to make sure that we add like highlights and darker colors just to make it more interesting for the eye to look at. So again, for that, it's just going to take too much time for me just to show it. So again, I'm going to show it a uh, time-lapse video for that but I'm going to show you you know the basics so if you're gonna start to create highlights and making darker areas for the same you know, sample the color again press C on top of this color you know we can make something we can pick like a darker color and we can reduce the intensity of uh, our painting right here so it's something really low and you can start to paint as you can see, it's a darker color, so we can start to you know, create highlights and darker tones just to make the some of the details pop more. So you can pick a darker color like that one just for you know just for making that look more interesting and more more believable. And if you want to create highlights use the same color, this time use a lighter one and you can start to create kind of like a highlights you know for the clothing, for the fold things like that and this applies for the whole uh, mesh and the face as well so that's pretty much what you can do and again you can also use, you know you can use different types of brushes for this it doesn't have to be the standard brush which I'm using right now you can use uh, different ones and also something I didn't show last time was uh, the stroke type you can switch that if you switch that to something like color spray now it's going to paint uh, increase intensity so you can see it and change the color as well so you can actually see what it does you know it starts to paint like dots kind of thing so again you can try different techniques to create stuff like that but that's pretty much the idea it's just uh, fill with the base color and then you can come back and add the highlights and the darker areas so I'm going to show you that time-lapse video for uh, painting as well and after that there's going to be a video on how to you know bake uh, all the color maps and the normal maps so that we can actually take that back to Maya and if there's something else that I forget that I forgot to show you this time I'll just show it to you next time as well so again just start to create highlights And I'm going to leave you with the time lapse. And also later, we also may also have to use Photoshop just to create, 
you know, more believable. And also for color correction type of thing. It's really easy to do those things using Photoshop than using ZBrush. So I'll probably show you how to do that. And also create like overlays just to uh, use some type of fabric over this shirt so it actually looks like it's made of some specific type of fabric. So I'll probably show you that as well in more detail after the time lapse. Okay?